What are some of the dumbest things influencers actually do? Let's find out, starting with... Number six, on the lamb. Colombian influencer Ada Victoria Merlano helped break her mother out of jail using rope and a bike. Merlano's mother, former Senator Ada Merlano Rebelletto, was convicted after authorities discovered evidence of weapons, voter fraud, and corruption linked to her election win. Rebelletto was thrown in jail within six months of her election win, but her daughter wasn't having it and came to her aid two weeks later. On the day of the breakout, the disgraced politician had a dentist appointment outside of the prison. Correctional officer and driver escorted her to the dentist office, but allowed her to go to her appointment unsupervised. Merlano distracted the security guard while her mother jumped out of the exam room's third floor window with the help of a hidden rope that her daughter set up for her. When she was on the ground, Rebelletto jumped on the back of a bike driven by a man pretending to be a delivery driver. When news of her mother's escape hit the media, Merlano embraced the free publicity. The influencer, who had two and a half million followers, was featured on the front page of a magazine and posed wearing only handcuffs. Authorities eventually found Rebelletto and Venezuela and arrested her. Officials also arrested and charged Merlano and the dentist for their role as accomplices in the prison break. The mother-daughter duo argued their innocence during the trial and faced years in prison if found guilty. But Merlano was released on bail and remained active on social media where she posted about the importance of staying happy despite the fact that she may spend a significant amount of her life in prison. With the family's connections and money, maybe they should have hired someone to break Rebelletto out instead, rather than letting Merlano take the situation into her own hands. It's cool that she had her mom's back like that, but the breakout sounds like something out of a cartoon, doesn't it? Number five, overplaying her hand. Texas influencer Sassy Trucker, whose real name is Tierra Young Allen, faced two years in prison after she screamed at a rental car agency employee in Dubai and had her passport confiscated. Sassy Trucker seemed to think she could act the way she would in the US, which must be pretty sassy, without considering that she may have different rights in a foreign country. Apparently, she was involved in a fender bender, which resulted in her rental vehicle being impounded along with her credit cards and cell phone. When she was back at the car rental agency, Sassy Trucker claimed the employees told her she couldn't have her stuff back until she paid an undisclosed amount of money. According to Sassy Trucker, she fought with the employee who made the demand and the agency called the police. Law enforcement confiscated Sassy Trucker's passport and refused to give it back while they decided whether or not to press charges against her. Sassy Trucker claimed to be one of the only female trucking influencers in the world and the first one in Dubai. A fact, she must have thought that she was really important. She visited the city multiple times in the past and documented her trips on social media. The influencer elicited the help of Detained by Dubai, a nonprofit assisting U.S. citizens incarcerated there. Its CEO put out a statement acknowledging the distress Sassy Trucker's family had experienced and referring to a similar case where two Americans paid an extortion fee to a rental car agency to recover their passports and leave the country. Sassy Trucker's family also enlisted Senator Ted Cruz's office to help, who released a statement claiming they would gather details and work to bring Sassy Trucker back to the U.S. Allen ultimately paid a $1,360 deposit to Dubai police to clear her travel ban, so she did get back home. But she may still have some other legal complaints that haven't been resolved. It's always good to remember, if you're visiting another country, you're in their house, so don't act sassy. Number four, Baby Shark. Doo -doo 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 -doo. A Chinese influencer with almost 8 million social media followers infuriated fans when she filmed herself roasting and feasting on a baby great white shark. In the deleted footage, a vlogger known as Tizzy unwrapped the six and a half foot fish and lay next to it to show how much shorter she was than the vulnerable predator. Then, she boiled the head in hot water to create a broth and seasoned the rest of the body with various spices. Tizzy gained millions of followers with her live streams on Chinese platforms Du Yin and Kuishu where she would consume rarely eaten animals like crocodiles and ostriches. In the controversial viral footage, Tizzy tore off large chunks of meat from the baby shark and ate them, saying that they had a tender texture. The International Union for Conservation of Nature lists great white sharks as a vulnerable species and is one step away from being classified as endangered. Police in the city of Nanchang, with seemingly too much time on their hands, actually performed DNA tests from tissue remnants of the animal to confirm it was a great white shark. The vulnerable fish is protected under Chinese law, and officials claimed Tizzy
Pelosi broke wildlife protection laws in her video. China banned trading and consuming wild animals at the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic to prevent zoonotic diseases, diseases spread from animals to humans, from spreading. The ban caused a crackdown on influencers who streamed videos of themselves eating endangered animals. The illegal possession or trade of wildlife products in China can result in fines or a prison sentence. Although Tizzy claims she legally bought the shark on Alibaba's Taobao shopping platform for $1,140, she received an $18,500 fine for cooking and eating the great white. Maybe she shouldn't have eaten a vulnerable species on camera. Number three, don't listen to Barbie. Valeria Lukyankova, better known as the Ukrainian Barbie, faced accusations of running a sect when she gave her followers life-threatening advice. The Barbie impersonator, who also styled herself as an alien princess named Amachu, denied having any plastic surgery beyond a breast enhancement. She said the rest of her unique appearance was due to living on a diet of cosmic microfood, better known as air and light. She told her followers that she had out-of-body experiences that took her to planets scientists had not discovered yet and that she'd communicated with extraterrestrial beings. Fans paid $17 monthly to join Lukyankova's exclusive club, Rex Deuce, where she taught members about her lifestyle and beliefs. Lukyankova attempted to convince members of Rex Deuce that a scary worm or octopus-like parasite lived inside of everyone's body and it would destroy the body's will and dominate it. The Barbie impersonator urged followers to drink turpentine to rid their bodies of the parasite. She also told female fans that breathing over mercury would give them paranormal abilities and allow memories of past lives to awaken. Lukyankova further told her followers to make tampons with grapefruit essential oil and tar, which she claimed would shrink their reproductive organs. Blogger and YouTuber Katya Kanasova, who specializes in exposing fake healers, called out the Barbie wannabe for her dangerous advice. Lukyankova's followers risked their health by following the advice, and at least one person developed severe anemia. One of Lukyankova's aides, Anastasia, Asia, allegedly threatened people who critiqued Rex Deuce and claimed she would flush anyone who dared say a negative word about the club down the toilet. We're not sure if this was a valid threat. One day, Lukyankova abruptly closed Rex Deuce. She posted an explanation saying that the club had helped many people find themselves, understand how their worlds worked, and allowed them to master quantum technologies and apply them to daily life. So, obviously, mission complete. While she said she received gratitude from members of the organization, she decided she couldn't run the club anymore. She ended the post by stating that she wanted to share information with even more people. One commenter suggested that the real reason for closing Rex Deuce was that Konosova exposed her while others accused her of giving dangerous advice and putting people's lives at risk. Lukyankova moved to Crimea in 2014 after Vladimir Putin annexed it in an attempt to help boost tourism. The avid Putin supporter faced a probe by the Russian police and prosecutor's office for her outrageous advice. Lukyankova eventually disappeared and is believed to be hiding somewhere in Mexico, probably still giving weird, bad medical advice. And like, look, we feel bad for these people that took her advice, but who's listening to Barbie and being like, oh, that makes sense, I'll drink turpentine? It sounds like one of those weird toys where they say something, but it sounds like something else, right? Like she's saying, we all have fun at the mall or something, but all the kids hear is, you have an octopus parasite inside you that wants to take over your body. Number two, puppy girl. Former optician Jenna Phillips ditched her 9-to-5 to make six figures a month acting like a dog. Known as Puppy Girl Jenna, Jenna earned 196,000 fans on TikTok thanks to videos of her doing everything a puppy would do, like being walked on a leash to getting yelled at for going to the bathroom inside, whatever in the world that actually means. One of her videos showed her crawling and panting across the kitchen as she moved toward her food and water bowls that sat on a rack on the floor. She took a few bites of the food, then licked the crumbs that fell on the ground. In another clip, Jenna was on all fours outside a restaurant, wearing a leash and collar and begging her owner for table scraps. Jenna explained that she enjoyed acting like a dog and has always felt like one. She said that she wanted to play fetch or just run around and play. While Jenna had been curious about puppy play for many years, she turned it into a career opportunity when she created her OnlyFans account. Although she originally planned to use her account as a hobby, she soon made thousands of dollars a week. Jenna decided to quit her job as an optician and make puppy play her full-time job. Subscribers typically spent $20 monthly for her content, although some were willing to pay hundreds of dollars 
dollars for exclusive clips. Puppy Jenna's popularity resulted in other social media users posting reaction videos mocking her content. Despite being made fun of, Jenna publicly stated that she found the reaction videos funny and acknowledged that she had a very unusual job. Other puppy girls have created social media accounts and gained similar popularity, generating hundreds or thousands of dollars monthly with their specific content. Whoever the types of people are that enjoy watching girls act like dogs, enough of them out there are willing to pay for it. And seriously, her having an accident inside leaves us with a lot of questions. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay tuned right here for more crazy influencers. Number one, not the cop car. German Big Brother celebrity contestant Emmy Russ posed on a police patrol vehicle parked outside a police station, leaving a dent on the hood. Russ asked her mom to take pictures of her dressed in a miniskirt outside a police station. She climbed on top of the car and gave the camera a playful look before officers confronted her. Officers demanded that she get off the vehicle and saw the damage her stunt did to the car. So they accompanied her to the station and filed an official complaint for the property damage she caused. Russ denied being responsible for the dent on the car and said that she took a picture of the vehicle before she climbed on top of it so she wouldn't be held responsible for it. The police confiscated her phone to check for damage to the car in her previous photos. If the investigation confirmed that Russ was responsible for the damage, she would likely face a fine of several hundred euros. Maybe taking a photo on top of a car in front of a police station wasn't the brightest idea. The follow-up should have been her in the back of a cop car. Here are a few people who completely expose themselves. Number 10, David Guerra. Someone should have told David that you shouldn't post evidence of your crimes on social media. This genius from San Antonio's south side posed for the camera holding cash, guns, and let's call it illegal substances because, uh, thanks YouTube censors. Clearly, David was looking for attention, and he got it. Shortly after he posted the images came to the attention of the Bexar County Sheriff's Department. They sent three different divisions after Guerra, and it didn't take long for them to find his car and pull him over. In the car, they found illegal substances, a loaded gun, and cash. The sheriffs also found another man in the car with them, Urza Guerra. They arrested them both. We don't think they let you post on Instagram from jail, so we may not hear from them for a while. Number 9. Paula Asher it was bad enough that a Kentucky woman made the awful choice to drive drunk. But when Paula Asher slammed into a car filled with four teenagers, she made things even worse by driving away. Police inevitably caught up with her and charged her with four crimes. Driving under the influence, leaving the scene of an accident, driving under the influence of alcohol, and possession of a controlled substance. Asher didn't keep quiet afterwards, though her lawyer probably wishes she did. In her infinite wisdom, she decided to post on Facebook about how she got drunk and hit another car. She made sure to end the post with the signature LOL. It's one thing to make terrible choices. It's something entirely worse to laugh out loud about them on social media. Outraged family saw and shared the post with the judge in the case. The judge was, shall we say, unhappy. When Judge Mary Jane Phelps saw Asher in court for the first time, she told her to delete that Facebook account. But Asher did not delete her Facebook account. Another in a series of unwise decisions. When the judge found out, Asher was found in contempt of court and sentenced to spend two days in the county jail. In another DUI or LOL moment, Oregon teen Jacob Cox Brown had a serious wake-up call driving drunk. He too joked about his crime on Facebook when he wrote, Driving drunk. Classic. But I am sorry to whoever's vehicle I hit. He ended the post with a sticking your tongue out emoji. Two of his Facebook friends shared the post with police who promptly arrested Jacob. When you post something like that, you've got to assume it won't stay private for long. Number 8. Nicholas Grove he did not want to go to jail. So when cops brought him in for booking, he decided to run away. He was originally arrested for stealing computers, checks, and credit cards from an Oregon Education District building. Nicholas couldn't bear the thought of prison, so as they were booking him, he hopped over a counter and ran away. Freedom didn't last long. They scooped him back up later that summer and booked him, successfully this time, to await trial. Still, Grove was determined. Grove seized another opportunity in the wreck yard by climbing over the fence, a fence topped with razor wire, and went on the run again. This time, he made it to Mexico. Maybe Nicholas thought that he was Andy Defresne, the character from the Shawshank Redemption who broke out of prison to live out his days in Mexico. He wasn't. If you watch the movie carefully, you'll notice that Andy Defresne never posted anything on Facebook. But while Nicholas lived a life of freedom in Mexico, he just kept posting. 
He posted selfies of himself in and around Cancun, which made it pretty easy for police to find him once they got the info from Facebook. A year and a half later, U.S. Marshals swooped in to Tula, Mexico and picked up the fugitive. They hauled him back to Oregon to face trial for his original crimes and a new one, felony escape. He got five years. Number seven, Dakari McAniff. A Los Angeles man named Dakari McAniff thought he cracked the code to get famous on social media. For some reason, he felt the secret to Twitter fame involved showing the world your gun and aiming it at people. Then he said if he got 100 retweets, he'd use it on someone. It didn't take long for cops to figure out who posted the image and caption on Twitter. It also didn't take long for them to arrest McAniff and bring him to jail. We don't know how long it'll take for this Los Angeles sniper to learn his lesson, but we doubt he'll post about it when he does. Number six, Orlando Henderson. He just loved to flaunt his luxury lifestyle on social media. He took pictures of himself next to his brand new Mercedes and posted them claiming to be building his brand. He also posted pictures of himself holding huge stacks of cash. While he posted like a famous rapper, Orlando was a lowly bank teller in North Carolina. We're not sure how many likes he got, but we do know the FBI were not his biggest fans. However, Henderson was pretty brave in his plot to rob his own bank. He just walked into the vault, grabbed people's cash, and deposited it into his account at an ATM around the corner. In all, he made off with $88,000. He put $20,000 down to buy the new Mercedes that he proudly posed with for social media. Once the FBI got involved, Orlando's life of luxury came crumbling down. Orlando was charged with a few counts of fraud and 19 separate counts of theft and embezzlement. With decades in prison and millions of dollars in fines heading his way, Orlando probably wishes he stayed off social media. Number five, Lee Van Bryan. After a long flight from London, Lee Van Bryan landed in Los Angeles with his friend Emily Bunting. Lee and Emily made it through passport control. However, less than friendly Homeland Security agents prevented them from taking another step. In this case, it wasn't that Lee and Emily had done something. It wasn't even that they were planning to do something. Instead, border agents detained and grilled them over some cheeky tweets Lee posted before traveling to LA. Before leaving, he posted about how he would destroy America and dig up Marilyn Monroe's grave. Not exactly wise, but still just a tweet. What the border agents didn't understand, according to Lee, is that destroy is slang for party. So when he tweeted that he was going to destroy America, he was talking about partying. Oh, and he didn't mean it when he tweeted three weeks prior that they were going to Hollywood Boulevard to upset people and dig up Marilyn Monroe's grave. In fairness, maybe it was all a big misunderstanding. It seems likely that Lee and Emily were traveling to LA to have fun and party. And as they pointed out to the border agents, digging up Marilyn Monroe's grave is a joke. He lifted from the show Family Guy. The Department of Homeland Security was having none of it though. So instead of a hearty welcome to America, they got a trip in a police van and an overnight stay in a holding cell. Lee met some nice men in his holding cell who were allegedly huge and covered with tattoos. They told him they'd been arrested for smuggling substances into the country. Then they took his dinner. The next day, it was back to the airport for Lee and his friend, where they were sent home on a jet. Number four, Dominic Alfonseca. Dominic will have you know he's the victim in this story. All he did was walk into a bank and ask for some money. He smiled at the teller and handed her a note. He said please and thank you. What we know at this point is that Dominic was a very polite bank robber. His note, though, was a little more urgent. It said he needed the money right now because it only takes the police three or four minutes to arrive. Then it said to ring the alarm a minute after he's gone and make sure the money doesn't blow up on his way out. He even put a little smiley face at the end. He walked out with a bag full of cash and was arrested 22 minutes later. Alfonseca didn't waste those 22 minutes. That was all the time he needed to make a couple of of Instagram posts sharing videos of the robbery and a photo of the note he'd given the teller. The reason why Alfonseca believed he was the victim is pretty simple. He never threatened the teller or anyone else. He just politely asked for the money. It's not his fault she was generous. Nothing to do with the fact that he was an aspiring rapper who posted the photo and videos for exposure. Not one to miss an opportunity, Alfonseca took some time in a jailhouse interview to give shout outs to Michelle Obama, Justin Bieber, and Lady Gaga. Number three, Augustine Nadru. On a sunny January afternoon on Staten Island, Augustine made a little clip for his Instagram followers. He filmed himself strolling down the sidewalk and chatting with a postal service worker. Then he filmed himself walking into a bank and telling a cashier how lovely she was. He was careful to say he was a one-woman man, but if he weren't, he would marry her. Finally, Augustine turned to the room and shouted at the top of his lungs, This is a robbery! Then he left. 
Augustine didn't stick around to get any money. If he had, things would have gotten a lot worse for him. Even so, the police were happy to charge him with several crimes. In a hilarious twist, this was the second bank he, quote, robbed that day. He also had an open case from 2018 in which he walked into another bank and pulled the same stunt. In the end, he was charged with reckless endangerment. Police also found a little bit of weed on him, which was still illegal at the time. Number two, Harim Shah. Some people never learn. Take this Pakistani TikTok star, for instance. In 2019, Shah filmed herself in the conference room of Pakistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, something that's strictly forbidden. If she just kept quiet, she'd probably get away with it. But that's not what TikTok celebrities do. Instead, Shah did the opposite. She posted it on TikTok for her 1 million plus followers, prompting outrage and criticism on social media. The government launched a small investigation, but she never suffered any consequences. She got away with it this time. After a brush with the law, you'd think that Shaw would be cautious about what she posted online. But in January of 2022, she did it again. Shaw posted pics of herself after arriving in London carrying loads of cash. In the video, she claimed she brought it illegally from her native Pakistan. This time, though, she took things even further. She told her followers that even though they should be careful if they did something like that, it was easy for her and they could not stop her. She even said that in Pakistan, the laws are only for the poor. We can't say for sure if Shah learned from this. Still, nobody likes a gloater. This time, the outrage was loud enough that Pakistan's feds launched a money laundering investigation into Shah's activity. That's when things got uncomfortable. A prominent Pakistani politician stepped forward in Shah's defense in an unexpected twist. Daniel Malik, a former candidate for one of Pakistan's larger political parties and a businessman in London, told the press that the cash was his and he'd loaned it to Shah as a friend so she could make a fun little video for the internet. According to Danielle, the cash was all for legitimate business and Shah did nothing wrong. This must be true. When has a politician ever stretched the truth? Number one, Andrew Hennels. Andrew went on Facebook and posted about his plan to rob his local Tesco supermarket. He must have made the post moments before walking into the store because just 15 minutes later, police had him in custody. He managed to steal a getaway car in that short window and drove to a local pub. When police picked him up, they found the weapon he used to threaten the clerk and the 400 pounds he'd stolen from the store. The police seemed grateful for the Facebook post. To them, the pictures and posts confirmed what they already knew. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section whether what percentage of men would care that their girlfriend or wife were on OnlyFans or have had an OnlyFans account.